what I'm hearing is that the um, toxins that help contribute to the die-off of the algae, of the seagrass, has now settled into the algae, into the red algae. So the, the manatees are now eating the algae because the seagrass is all gone. And now the, the toxins in the algae are uh, pretty much uh, almost like putting them into shock. They're, they're dying off at a, at a regular pace. There's 80 of them in the Northern Lagoon have died off since the beginning of the year. And one of the reasons they know it's the algae is because they're finding undigested just balls of red algae in their, in their stomachs when they do the necropsies. Um, manatees are completely herbivores. They um, consume only plants. So we see manatees eating um, in brackish water or in the ocean. They're eating sea grasses, but they also enjoy freshwater plants as well. Um, they consume about 10% of their body weight. So for they, um, we kind of relate it to if you're eating salad, um, you know, it kind of creates that metabolism and it's burning. And so for manatees, it's that same thing. They constantly have to eat in order to kind of um, keep their energy up. Seagrass beds get damaged frequently from boat traffic. Uh, the boats create scars in the seagrass beds and even um, an inch gap between seagrass, um, it can take years for that seagrass to grow back together. So <clears throat> the, the tattering of our seagrass beds definitely um, can cause separation in them. We also have issues with the seagrass not being able to flourish and grow because of sedimentation and um, pollution in the waters that cause that water to be cloudy and so the sun is not able to penetrate deep enough to reach the seagrass and therefore um, you're not having photosynthesis occur. So we need um, to be able to have that clear water in order for our seagrass to grow and um, also to, to kind of deter um, boat traffic and also human traffic from just um, kind of being on top of that seagrass and damaging it. They're always amazed on just how gentle they are and also the, the, the size. And you, you think most people don't realize that average manatee's weight is about 1,000 to 1,200 pounds and the size is about 10 to 12 feet long. So it's amazing how large they are, but as a large creature, they're, they're gentle as can be, just slow moving for most part unless they get uh, spooked. a lot of what we do because I mean if you, you know amongst all the other things that, that are in the lagoon being such a diverse estuary um, you know, there's so much out there there's fish and there's stingrays and there's birds and things but with most people that are coming out to experience nature they're looking for you know they're looking for the larger animals you know it's like going up north and see you know, you're going to see the bear or the moose not the chipmunk uh, so it's, it's uh, <coughs> it affects uh, people's interest in what they can do and the, the more things that they're interested in uh, gets them more knowledgeable about the environment and more concerned about preserving it. Because uh, you know, one thing that we focus on, we always have, is that is education. Um, we, we not only take people out on kayak tour to enjoy being outside and enjoy kayaking, but also to in, in, inform them and educate them about where they are, uh, what's going on with the ecosystem, the lagoon, what lives here and what uh, what needs to be done to protect it in the future. And um, a lot of people, but nowadays with ecotourism and stuff and using the ecotour term, everybody is, uh, you know, they're, they, when they come out, they're looking to get education about what they're seeing, not just to go out and say, oh, there's a bird or there's a manatee. They want to tell me what's going on with the manatee, what their health's like, what they, how they reproduce, you know, they want a knowledge of everything. Education. They need to know the proper things to do, what not to do. And so hopefully we provide a lot of that information as well as a lot of other environmental information about conservation and local animals and sea life. We see about 45,000 visitors, both local and from abroad, 
um, on an annual basis. We also instruct about 5,500 school children. Many of those come to us, many we meet for field trips, and then others we do outreach classes for. So our main purpose is to educate people in the right things to do, and um, hopefully they will carry that forward.